According to Moss Mountain Farm folklore, each time the calendar year contains two blue moons, a unique phenomenon occurs on Halloween night. If you look out beyond the Arkansas River and into the valley, the souls of lost loved ones can be seen in the mist rising from the treetops and their voices heard whispering in the wind. Happy Halloween from Moss Mountain Farm. I hope you have a safe and fun evening. Look at this view of the river. What is that? Well, since this most recent sighting and all the excitement and stir it's caused, I felt like I needed to clear the air. Between the constant landscape maintenance, vegetable gardening, and all the fresh pies we bake each week for tours, there's absolutely no way I could single-handedly do it all. So I suppose now it's time to let you in on my little secret. It is Sasquatch. Strong as an ox and tall enough even for the highest hedge, Sasquatch excels as a landscapist. Over in the vegetable garden, for instance, let's just say Sasquatch can hoe a row with the best of them. And you wouldn't have guessed it, but Sasquatch can make a mean buttermilk pecan pie too. Sasquatch is basically an introvert. He's really kind of shy and never wants to take any credit for all the hard work. Every now and again, a visitor may come to Moss Mountain and catch a glimpse of Sasquatch, but it's actually rare to catch Sasquatch on camera like this. Quite impressive. When a sighting does occur, I'll tell you just like I tell them, don't be afraid, it's just Sasquatch. Over the years, it's been great having Sasquatch around, although I will say it can be a little rough on tools and so forth. I've often wondered if maybe you should enroll in some sort of anger management class. However, I have to say that overall, having the creature hang around has really worked out pretty well. Yeah, we've just been super busy lately. Hey, my battery's about to go dead on my phone. Let me call you back, okay? All right, thanks a lot. Okay. This is like a dream. What's the matter with you? Chris, the hat, how? It's a corn maze, I know. Uh, how, how did you do? You told me to get it ready for Halloween. But it's it's a corn maze. Yeah, I know. You can find anything on YouTube. I just looked it up on YouTube, really? man. How yeah, did you great. plant that like that? It looks real. I'm Tracy Allen from Channel 17 News, and this is a breaking news bulletin. The world as we know it appears to be in chaos as numerous reports of zombies pour in from across the globe. Experts say that the virus is not airborne, so the only way to get infected is to be bitten. Once the you know, this is about the time everyone panics, but you know, there are actually a few easy tips you can follow that will help you survive the zombie apocalypse. And remember, Aim for the head.
The first thing you need to know may sound like a tired old cliche, but it's very important. It's exercise. You see, zombies are walkers, not runners, but they're, they're dead, so they don't run out of breath. You just want to make sure that you're in tip-top shape so you don't end up somebody's supper. Now another thing to remember, whether you're working or playing, you never want to let your guard down. We've all heard it before. They just come out of nowhere, people say. Well, this is what I like to do. <clears throat> Mirrors, I have them everywhere. That way these nasty walkers can't sneak up on me. That brings me to my next point, weapons. You definitely need some firepower, but the sound of guns frightens my songbirds and shakes up the hummingbirds. Of course, some zombie experts recommend a baseball bat, but for me, there's nothing like a beloved garden spade. You see, it has a nice cutting edge and a broader sweet spot and longer length for greater protection. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to clean this up as soon as you can because you don't wanna leave a mark on your lawn. Now this next tip is self-explanatory, or at least I hope so. You see, you have to have food and water, certainly, but you also have to protect it. That's why I use electric fencing. You know, electricity can be very effective, and you can pick up these electrical fence chargers at your local farm store. Hey, not only are you protecting your food and your water, but this can be a source of entertainment, hours of amusement. Mm, good one. Now you might not think this last tip is important, but trust me on this one, it really is. You see, when the zombie body count begins to stack up, so does the aroma and the stench. So that's why I always plant plenty of fragrant flowers. You see, zombies are basically just rotting flesh, so they produce a lot of odor. To mask that odor and bring a nice fragrance to the house, try planting some of these beautiful flowers. They also look great around the house. Mmm, that's nice. You know, the best laid plans of mice and men often don't work out. So as the old saying goes, if you can't beat them, join them. What you're witnessing here is the art of decayed flesh. <laughs> hey, look at that. Look at we're peeling our skin off. Nice. So then the other stuff what we'll do is we'll make, we'll make some texture around it and then it's gonna be like scabby gross everywhere. This could be a commercial for Neosporin. And action. Oh shoot, I can't remember, sorry. <laughs> you see, zombies are walkers, not runners. I feel like I'm getting too close to y'all. Hey, if you want to become a, ah, sorry, okay. That's good. A bumby. Yeah, if y'all have like shoes, you might want to take them with you. What Alan will do is he will walk from there and then uh, he'll say, the thing that you want to do is you got to have plenty of food and water, but what you need to do is to protect it. And what I use, electrical fences, and that's when it pans over to you guys.
I refuse yeah, to introduce our cast and crew with Cairo syrup or Aunt Jemima. So. <laughs> if, if you're uncomfortable, you can get up for a second, but remember your spot, okay? So, uh, well, if you're comfortable, then that's fine with me. Okay, here we go. Uh, okay, so splatter. Wow, lovely dental work. Is it dramatic enough? You, I fell down to show you how to fall down, and I had my hand here, oh, and I fell right on my ribs. Oh, and I'm so like, weird. what an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> We've all heard it before. Sorry. Sorry, Lisa. Okay. All right. Here we go. So you're going to roll over and say, now this last one may not seem important to you, but trust me, put the wheelbarrow down. And then when your zombie body count starts to add up, the aromas will as well. This is what I do to my actors when they don't listen. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and be sure to ring the bell for notifications.